Tim James, thank you for being on my show. Michael, you, thank you for having me on your show. <laughs> you are the chemical free guy, also known as the health hero. Tell me more yeah, that's about what they that. Tell me. I love chemical free. It's what we're all about for so many reasons. And we've already talked before. And I have to say, you know, before just to get the ball rolling, I have to tell you, anytime I talk with healthcare professionals, influencers, people that really get into natural health, I never agree with anyone 100%. But you and I had spoken for probably a good hour already, and I, I found very little. And well, you had to correct me on one thing. We'll get into that later. The one thing that maybe we weren't 100% on because I wasn't 100% and I, I learned something from you that made a whole lot of sense. You changed my perspective. That's going to be the it's, teaser. We'll get to that later. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. I love it when I can change my beliefs and I can see something differently than I saw it before. And it, it's just a, a, an openness and a pattern of growth that I didn't have when I was you know, the, the red, redneck kid from Eastern Oregon growing up in societal conditioning and parental conditioning and being able to break through that stuff is, is huge. It's really oh, huge. Yeah. I always have to have an open mind, be willing to grow. Um, we don't know it all and we're evolving in our knowledge, our understanding. So hopefully people that are tuning into our shows, I say our shows, you have the health hero show. Hopefully we're accelerating uh, their growth and helping them to learn more faster than it took us absolutely yeah we can condense the time time frame for them that's awesome i love doing that chemical free how'd you stumble on that name well it was um originally um you know i wanted to be like you know, super nature and stuff like that. And my company was actually called primalfit.tv and we were a, a marketing educational company. And then um, I got a, a cease and desist letter from, um, there's another, Mark Sisson, I don't know if you know, <laughs> he has a primal company and, and they said, you have similar products, you have probiotics, you have enzymes and stuff like that. And you need to cease and desist and send us all your products. And, and I went and talked to my attorney and he says, um, he says, look, you, you have a 90% chance you're going to win this, but it's going to cost you $100,000. And I said, I'm going to change my name. <laughs> so right. I thought about it. And four hours later, I went with Chemical Free Body. And the reason I went with it was, um, number one, um, one of the most shocking things that ever happened to me was I typed in three words into my browser, umbilical cord chemical, umbilical cord chemical. And when you guys are done listening to this, your listeners are done listening to this show. I, and I hope that you'll go do that and check it out and you'll see what I did. I found studies, Michael, going back to 2005 that showed that every young child and young mother, uh, when a child is born, they test the blood of the umbilical cord and they were looking for 400 toxic chemicals and they found 250 of what they were looking for. And 180 of those caused cancer in humans and 212 caused developmental and brain disorders. And I, like literally was, I was put back in my seat. Like I felt something in turn. I was like, Oh my God. I'm like, if these young babies and young mothers, the healthiest of all of us are already polluted now at birth, the older we're all polluted, but we can't see it. There's these microscopic invaders that have gotten in, inside of us and they are dragging down our immune system and our vitality. And it is some, it's like a missing link. And then I realized the older we are and the more time we've had to spend on this planet and this in this journey that we have and this gift that we've been given, the more time we've had to bioaccumulate these toxins from the air we breathe, from the water we drink, from the food we eat, from the clothes that we wear that are not, not, not natural fibers, from shampoos and toothpaste. If your toothpaste says harmful, if swallowed, please contact the poison control center. You may want to rethink putting that in your mouth again. So these types of things, sunscreens, makeups, all these things started hitting me. And that's when I was just, I, I thought, man, if I could do one thing and bring awareness to this and then show people how to stop putting it in, which would actually change industry with our buying dollars, because we still hope, maybe our votes don't count anymore, but when we vote with our dollars, it does. And if I can show them how to get this, these toxins out of their body, I can help lift people up on a level they've never, it's a microscopic level. 
and, and up comes their energy and they boost their immune system. And, and that's what we've been doing. I've been doing it myself for 11 years personally and, and seven years, um, our chemicalfreebody.com, our company, that's what my mission has been. It's awareness and then education to stop putting them in and how to get it out. And, yeah, uh, and it's been working out real well for folks. Yeah. And I, I guess we can't really avoid getting them in, even living our absolute best. They're everywhere. We can just decrease, right? Our exposure. Yeah, and you can substantially decrease, substantially decrease, right? Yeah. So I agree. I'll give you an example. Like the first thing people should realize is that like these newer homes that are energy efficient homes, they seal them up big time. So older homes that are kind of, they got drafty homes and stuff like that. They actually have air circulating in them better, which is much better because we're supposed to be outside. You know, we would be in maybe in a hut or something like that or living in a cave. At least we'd have fresh air. But today with pollution outside in the cities, it's pretty bad. But your home is over 100 times more polluted than any downtown smoggy L.A. or, uh, you know, city in America. When you have, you know, paints off gassing for four and a half years, literally after you paint it, you have uh, glues um, in the particle board, especially in the summertime. If you have carpet in your home, it's off gassing uh, a volatile organic compound called formaldehyde. And you're literally embalming yourself and your children slowly. So we need to crack our windows and get air purification systems and be smart about these things. Yeah. Tell, tell me a little bit about the air purification that you would use. Uh, well, the air purifier that I use, um, I, it's, it's kind of funny you brought that up because I just went on like a one and a half year journey testing a bunch of different ones in my room, myself personally, and also having people come into my room. And what was really interesting, the, the, the model that I'll tell you about is when people would come in, when I had this one going, half the people would say, wow, your air is amazing in here. They, they, without me saying nothing, or they would say, man, I feel, I feel like I'm uplifted or energized. Now, the other half, I would say, hey, do you feel any different here? What do you, what do you think? Do you smell anything? And they're like, wow, the air smells good. It smells like fresh mountain air. And um, I feel kind of good. And just think about that from the air. We take 20,000 breaths a day, Michael. So it's pretty important. Oxygen's our number one nutrient um, behind love, right? Super, super important. And without oxygen, you're dead in about four to seven minutes. So it is our primary nutrient. And um, so it makes a lot of sense to get our air right. But we don't think about that. We take it for granted. And we can't see those microscopic toxins. So out of sight, out of mind, we forget about it. So what ended up happening is um, the the company is called Austin Air. And I use what's called a Health Mate Plus. And that is the specific unit I do. And the reason I like that unit, um, quite a few reasons. I grew up on a farm. So, you know, I'm used to, you know, tractors and, and doing the heavy equipment. I ran, I was in a construction company for a while. I like industrial type, heavy duty things that are gonna, that are made simply that are, that are going to last, right. That are just going to last and weather the, weather the storm, not some rinky dink, you know, thing with a bunch of gadgets on it that breaks down and stuff. Right. So this unit is completely, uh, the shell is all metal. It's got a very simple knob you turn on. It's got three fan speeds and off. Um, usually these, um, filters uh, in there have about a pound of carbon in them. This, this one has 15 pounds of carbon. Mm. And the cool thing about the carbon though, is that it does miss some of the volatile organic compounds like formaldehyde that we talked about. This company knew that. So they, they blended a zeolite in with it to pick those up and fill in the gaps. So basically what you have is you have a large particle pre-filter, then a medium particle pre-filter, then 15 pounds of this carbon zeolite matrix filtering the air. And then on inside of it, then there's a HEPA filter. And a lot of people are familiar with that. So this is cool too, because we're actually getting things down to 0.01 microns, which is actually smaller than the, you know, the coronavirus deal. So totally great air filtration. It's very simple. It's very powerful. You turn it on 24 seven, it lasts about five years. Um, it's great for wildfires, um, cleaning up your room. Um, and just, yeah. and it makes you feel freaking great, dude. It's like, I literally walk into my room and it's like, I'm on a vac- you know, up in Idaho now visiting somebody. So I don't have it here with me. So I just crack my windows and stuff, but I always crack my windows. I have that sucker running. And I also have a um, uh, um, uh, Himalayan salt lamp going, creating negative ions to clean the air. And then I always also have a diffuser going, putting like clove or eucalyptus or lavender or whatever in my air too. So I'm really focused on air. And it's one of the biggest reasons that I'm super healthy now at age 48. And at 37, I was a, I was, my health was an absolute train wreck. So. Mm. Wow. 
Well, that's good. Um, and do you have a, a link to that if we wanted to check it out more, maybe on your website? Yeah, it's just on the website. It's under our all products under the products tab. Yeah. And we'll get to it again, but I think, is it chemicalfree.com or? Yeah, chemicalfreebody.com. Chemicalfreebody.com. Okay, great. Uh, you mentioned toothpaste. I'm <laughs> guessing you have a favorite toothpaste. Well, I actually like making my own um, with coconut oil, a little baking soda and some essential oils. But I know some people are thinking, oh my God, that's a lot. There's actually, there's there's a few of them out there. There's one that's out there that's a lot now is um, earth paste. And that's a pretty good one. Um, I just... I buy the one without the sweetener in it. Um, I try to stay away from it's like a xylitol on it, which is from the birch tree. Um, I just stay away from that. But when you're looking for a, something to clean your teeth, it should be natural because anything you put in your mouth goes directly through the mucous membrane in the mouth and directly into the bloodstream. There is no liver to filter it. So then you are swallowing a little bit too. So to think that you're going to put something in your mouth that says harmful if swallowed, please contact the poison control center. It just goes to show the level of confusion, denial, um, uh, maybe a lack of understanding, thinking that there's some other entity, somebody that's more smarter than you that's protecting you. The reality is, is that's not the case. Um, I, I thought that that, I thought that was the case. I thought, how could, how could we pay all this money in taxes? How could any government agency They're They're looking out for us, right? Well, if they were, why would they allow, allow that stuff to be in there? You know, another thing I found out was sodium lauryl sulfate is one of those cancer causing chemicals that they're finding in the bloodstream of these children, these babies. It's I went home, dude, it was the first ingredient on my shampoo. So it's pretty simple. Like I said before, stop buying products from companies that are polluting you and the planet, our environment, and start buying and giving your money with companies that have a heart and a soul and a moral compass that are providing good products for you. And you change industry. Those other companies will change. They will follow the dollars or they'll go away. And either one's fine with me. But I think that's where people have to realize that we have all the power with our buying dollars and we, we should take back all the power um, with our health. And, you know, I actually went to the Hippocrates Health Institute when I started my journey based on that dude, Hippocrates, right? He said, let thy food be thy medicine and thy medicine be thy food. And a lot of people have heard of, you've heard of that statement probably a sure. bazillion times, right? Yeah. So one other statement though, or a quote that a lot of people never quote him on is he said, he who is not his own doctor is a fool. And that is very important. What I like about that is it empowers people to take back their power and take 100 responsibility for their health and their life and every aspect of their life. And when you do that, it's amazing what can happen. Yeah. Wow. Well, those are a couple of good ways already to avoid getting chemicals in. But once they're in there, we've been saturated in them for years. How do we get them out? Okay. Well, now that you got your air right, I think number two is getting your water right. Okay. So the first thing to understand is that we don't live with nature. We don't live in nature we are nature. We are an expression of nature. And to draw the lines and connect the dots here, what's your body mostly made of? Water. Where do you find water? In nature. You're mostly made of water. Water's in nature. You're nature, right? Let's take another example. Um, the soil has something called bacteria in it or soil microbiome. Your gut has bacteria in it or gut microbiome. Many of those bacteria that are in your gut are the exact same ones that are in the soil. Again, we are nature. We have 60 trillion bacterial cells in our body, 360 viral cells and only 6 trillion human cells. So we're actually more virus. We're a sack of viruses and bacteria more than we are human. Right? We are more them than we are us. It's amazing. It's am our, This machine is amazing. And the other thing is, is when we find, decide to take our last breath and, and we break our body, let's say somebody cremates us or, you know, over time, it, what's left? A bunch of minerals. Where else do you find minerals? Nature. I just want to be very clear that people get that connection. This is why we're so sick today as a society and emotionally spent is because we've, we've broken the connection with nature. And I'll, literally, if, if people are really ill, I just tell them to get naked. I'm, I'm joking, but not really. And just go out in the forest. Like literally, just get out. Get your. You don't have to get naked, but that would be smart. You, would, you wouldn't believe what happens when you get back into nature, there's, there's places over that people pay money and go to China and they, they just send people out in the forest and they start healing, right? Getting yeah. the bacteria, breathing in those negative ions from the forest and the air. Grounding. They, what's that? Grounding in nature, you know, without, yeah, the, without yeah, the earth. If you're naked, frequency. you don't have shoes on. <laughs>
Yeah, all that stuff. So I went off on a tangent. You asked me a question. You probably have to rephrase it. You, oh, you were talking about how to get the stuff, how to get the chemicals out, right? Uh, so yes. water, water, water. Water is the lubricant of life. Okay, so now the next step is you got your air right. You got to get your water right. So we have to purify our water today. Water researchers years ago went all over the world and they tested water and 1,500 miles into the interior, Michael, um, in these pristine lakes where there was no man. Like 1,500 miles away from man, they were testing the two and two and a half inch fish and they had both male and female organs. Why? Because of these estrogen mimickers from plastics are so prevalent. Again, these microplastics, um, you know, when you wear a, um, like a polyester shirt or a blouse or something like that and you wash it, microplastics go out into nature and they get, they get up into the, into the jet stream, they get into the water. And then think about the concentration levels that we're at today, chemical plants and, and, and these types of things. So these little fish have turned into hermaphrodites. And this is, this is happening in all the tributaries and creeks and rivers and stuff like this now, and lakes that the amphibians and the little fishes are, uh, their hormones are getting disrupted. Now we're also seeing this now in humans where guys have got man boobs, women are getting more facial hair um, and stuff like that. So and more ovarian cysts, uterine cysts, breast cancer, prostate cancer, all these things are hormonal imbalances created by estrogen mimicker from plastics and a lot of other chemicals made from the basis of crude oil. So knowing this and knowing that tap water today, I mean, Flint, Michigan, most people know about that, right? How do we get to that point where our water is so polluted in our towns, that our infrastructure is broken? Our infrastructure in this country is a D minus. And there wasn't too long ago around the 1900s when there was dead horses and cows in the water and a bunch of pissed off women got together and said enough of this. That was the women's, the, the, the working class labor movement of the late 1800s, 1900s. And the women got the sanitation worker and the plumber and they got infrastructure and they got clean water into the cities. And that's what removed 97 to 98% of infectious disease. They got the urine and the feces out of the streets and they cleaned up the water. Where are we at now? We have urine and feces returning to the streets and our water is, is all jacked up again. Some water in America, a gallon of it, tap water, can have up to a half of a tablet of pharmaceutical drugs in it. Some of it you can actually light on fire, like literally. So that would be the extreme case. But even if it was just a little bit bad, this is why I'm trying to impart on people how important it is to take care of your beautiful body, which is a system. And, and, be a, and be an intelligent system and make sure that your inputs are as close to nature as possible. Clean air, clean water. So I, I triple purify my water and then I run it through a system that restructures it, alkalizes it, and then charges it with molecular hydrogen. Now, why do I do that? Because if you're on city tap water, this is very important. Those high pressure pipes are, are coagulating the water molecules. Normally water molecules are like four to five in a cluster. And after the city pressure pipes, uh, high pressure, they're like 20 to 25. What ends up happening is they're like bowling balls trying to go through a chain link fence. They bounce off the bowling ball, the water molecule, the chain link fence, your intestinal lining. So I've been preaching and teaching water for at, at one point, eight and a half years. It was like 2018, right? Something like that. And this gal's like, oh, Tim, you got to get this water. And she was all about alkalinization. I said, look, that's great for people with cancer. I'm kind of beyond that now. I've healed myself. I don't need it. I need purified water first. I don't need it. But she wouldn't leave me alone. So thank God. So finally, she puts me on the phone with a water expert. And at the end of a 45-minute conversation, you'd think I'd be open after all the stuff I learned. I was trying to open up, but I was still closed-minded back then a little bit. And he said, Tim, just go drink the effing water. So I was like, Okay. So he spoke my language, redneck, and I went over to <laughs> uh, Danusha's house, aka water woman, I call her now. And she said, she poured me a quart of this water. And she said, don't eat anything before you come over. And I said, okay. So I drank the water and then she put a little salt in my hand, not much, just a little Himalayan salt. She goes, that's going to help increase absorption. And she goes, in 15 minutes, I'm going to have you drink another quart. And I was like, okay, well, I, I drink a lot of water, but I don't know if I can do a whole nother quart in 15 minutes. I mean, I was like the water master, I thought. And guess what? I drank that second quart, Michael, and it was like the first quart wasn't even there. It was gone. And then she goes, now, I've never done this before because normally this would call what's called a Hertz reaction. People would start detoxing. They would get sick. They'd get flu-like symptoms because this water is so powerful, detoxer. She goes, I'm going to give you a third quart because, you you know, I grow about 70% of my food is sprouts and all this stuff. And I, and I juice and green juices twice a day, all these things I've learned to rebuild and maintain my health. And 
So about 24 minutes into it, right before the 30 minute mark where I was going to drink that third water, it was like, and my brain just like lit up and my arms started tingling again. I had that experience once the first time at the Hippocrates Health Institute on about day four or five on their program, where I looked at my buddy Charles and I was like, dude, do you feel as good as I do? And he's like, yeah, I said, my arms are tingling. My brain is clear. I haven't felt this. My mental fog is completely gone. and been plaguing me for years and getting worse and worse. I said, dude, we've, we've discovered the fountain of youth. Well, that water experience was about three times the level of, you know, whoa. And I, and I, so I drank the third one. I walked out of there. I thanked her. I said, thank you so much. And I went, I was teaching a group coaching class that night and I switched the whole topic. And I talked about this water the whole time. Afterwards, I called her up and I bought the machine and um, I've been high on water ever since. Yeah. So yeah. And chemicals out, you have got to get your water right. This yeah, is number so one. That was the molecular hydrogen water. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same thing. Okay. Yeah. Good. Awesome. Yeah, so clean and water. So those are the two things. Now, beyond that, we have a product called toxin detox that pulls out heavy metals, radiation, pollution, this type of stuff. But there's other things you can do. Um, you know, green juices, Corellas, eating things like um, cilantro helps pull stuff out. Um, you know, people do these foot, foot baths, um, good sleep. Exercise is really important uh, to, to move the lymphatic system, to push the toxins out. And also infrared saunas are big for, for detoxification. Now, infrared saunas, because you're sweating, you're perspiring, eliminating naturally. Yeah. Well, it's what you're kind of doing is you're, you're inducing kind of like a, um, an artificial fever, right? Higher metabolism. So like when somebody gets the flu bug, their bo the body heats up the core temperature to, to kill the virus, right? They were doing this over in Europe for cancer. They probably still are. It's called hyperthermia. They were raising the core temperature of the body of their patients. Um, you had to be under medical supervision. They would, uh, cause they had to put you on like a, some type of an anti-convulsion medication, but it was, it was working. It was killing cancer cells. So um, Dr. Coyne, I don't know if you know him, but he was, he had a conversation with Dr. Clement. He's a, you know, if you have two specialties in medicine, you're considered a genius. This guy had like five. He helped Siemens Corporation develop virtual colonoscopies. Um, so many people in the U.S. have cancer today, Michael. They heard about that hyperthermia treatment they were doing in Europe. It was working that the, they squawked to the FDA and the FDA um, hired uh, Dr. Coyne and like six of his five, six of his colleagues. And they did this five-year study on hyperthermia. And at the end of that study, the conversation with Dr. Clement was this. He said, Brian, if you'll just get your patients into an infrared sauna six days a week for 30 minutes, it's much more effective at killing cancer cells than the hyperthermia treatment that we just studied for five years, which, by the way, is very effective. So Brian plastered the entire institute with uh, these really awesome saunas. I became a sauna dealer myself, um, and I've been taking a sauna for 30 minutes for you know, a day for nine years because they're so good. They push crap out of your body. Now, recently I switched to a different unit because there was a breakthrough technology I discovered and it's been around for 20 years. I can't believe I didn't know it before this, but I got into this sauna and I had acne on my face, chest and back for two and a half weeks. I was very excited about it because I knew I was detoxing at a deeper level. And then two months into the program, I started having all this gray stuff come out of me, just pouring into my towel. And I called up Phil, the owner, and I said, hey, dude, what is this? Is it mold, heavy metals? He said, it's most likely heavy metals. Well, growing up as a kid, lead fishing weights, loading shotgun shells. You know, I swallowed some gasoline one time, siphoning gas out of my dad's pickup to put up my motorcycle. I mean, I was just around a lot of heavy metals and stuff like that. We probably had lead paint back in the day. I grew up in the 70s. So um, for five months, Michael, and I've been clean. I've been cleaning myself out for like almost 11 years for five months. This is just recent. I had this gray stuff pouring out. So at first I was freaked out and then I got really excited about it, but it just kept coming out. Now it's just, it dribbles out. I have a little bit in my towel sometimes, but five months. So infrared saunas are super important, not for just detoxification, which is important, but to handle viruses, bacteria, mold, yeast, fungus, parasites, and these mutagens, these cancers. I think it's a, a must today. Yeah. I'm always uh, cautious in recommending detoxification programs because it can be pretty uncomfortable, ugly, and even dangerous. You know, uh, sometimes things we take can throw off our gut flora and, and make things actually worse, not better. Um, do you have any cautions on that? What to maybe avoid or, or how to approach a detoxification? 
plan? Yeah, I, I, I think you're you're really talking about something really important here because, you know, when I first went to Hippocrates, the the greenhouse manager, Michael Bergonzi, and do you know that guy? No. You meet him? He Probably, was on a, he was on a his lot of them. There's so many. A, yeah, he was on his 10th day of a water fast. Now, here I am, the redneck meat eater, junk food eater, and they're telling me I got to drink green juices and coconut waters and uh, eat sprouts. So to me, that was like a fast, right? Even though it was like this, you know, avocados and bountiful stuff, which by the way, in three days, I was so saturated with nutrients. I wasn't even hungry. It was the weirdest thing ever. Cause I used to, have, I eat like Garfield. It was like an empty garbage disposal unit. Um, what ended up happening was I'm like, this guy's crazy. 10 days on only water. I couldn't even comprehend it. Right. I couldn't even comprehend it. So if somebody is, you know, they're overweight and they're on medications and stuff like that to do a water fast or something like that, you better be under medical supervision. You, you know, you should probably go to the true North clinic and let Dr. Goldhammer and his, his team help you. But beyond that, I think people should start small. What we, what we do is we just, we just want you to start drinking more water. Let's just start there. Let's up your water intake. 95% of people listening to this call, well, maybe not your listeners, but in America and around the world are not drinking enough water. 96% are not chewing their food well, which is the first step in the dominoes of digestion. 98% are not avoiding liquids with meals, right? A lot of people are diluting their digestive enzymes after they've chewed their food well. And 99% are not doing any breath work to calm themselves down and put, take them out of fight or flight and put themselves into rest and digest mode before they eat. Those are actually our core four secrets. That is the foundation that we teach over here in Chemical Free Body um, for our paid clients and everybody else. It's those core four things we believe are the foundation. We get that stuff started first. People are like, well, what am I going to eat? What am I exercising? I said, don't worry about it. You don't even have the foundation in place yet. You need to get your water right. We need to get you chewing your food, avoiding liquids with meals, and doing some breath work before you eat. Once we get that in place, and then we have our products that are kind of like a little clinic in a box that'll come in and start working their magic. We do that first. And then they have the energy and the propensity to want to start making those changes with their diet. Cause it, you know, it's, it's, and they have more mental clarity and they're excited about it rather than like, Oh, I'm going to give up everything I've loved. That's, you know, destroying them, but there's a weird dynamic there. And then they have the energy. They want to go, they want to go start walking. They want to go start, you know, jumping on a mini trampoline or joining a yoga class or a stretching class or going on a walk. Very important stuff. So we want to create a, an environment so people feel pulled to do something through the transformation internally and mentally rather than having to push themselves because willpower and that kind of stuff, it just, it doesn't work. We, we've, we have to reverse it where we're getting pulled. Yeah. I like the core four. I'm going to have to uh, put those in the show notes uh, below this video underneath the podcast. If you're listening to the podcast, uh, I, those are great keys. Thank you for sharing those. If anyone missed them and didn't uh, write them down, look in the show notes. They're going to be there. Well, That's good if stuff. If they go to our website, if they're on there for a little bit, it'll say, do you want a free gift? If they put their email and hit, hit a button, we deliver them the ebook on the core four secrets with some recipes and some other stuff in there. Ah, oh, beautiful. In Thank detail you. and much more detail than I went into. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And it's worth going into. So uh, everyone check it out. Get the download. <laughs> um, you talked about plant foods being natural detoxifiers, and you mentioned things like chlorella. And you know, let's talk. Let's talk phytonutrition and and plant foods and algaes as detoxifiers. You have your own green product, and you, it's no secret I do too. Mm -hmm. uh, we spoke about this last time. And uh, we're going to get into the little thing that I learned from you because I think I was closed minded on, on something. I'll, I'll get to that. Okay. But, uh, you know, I, I remember hearing from uh, a lot of people know Chris work from crispycancer.com. Right. And he was talking about the importance of fruits and vegetables and recommended that people have a product that they liked and that they used regularly and, and, and that maybe even switch it now and then because your, uh, formula might have things that mine doesn't and mine might have things that yours that you know and it's kind of a way of making sure we get all of this very very important nutrition things that you're not going to get in a multivitamin you know multi-mineral complex uh, which i don't take anyway right. but you know it, it's all of those nutrients that there's too many of them 
that you can't put them in a pill bottle without going to the food source. How'd you get started with yours? Why'd you decide that was important and you're going to make your own formula? Well, my, you know, I'll just tell the listeners like in two, when I was 37 years old, I was 42 pounds overweight. I had eczema on both of my elbows and my knee. They would crack and bleed, especially in the winter. I had another skin issue in my shoulder um, that the doctor squirted some like cortisone in there or something and ate it away. And then it had like a dent. It was kind of purple. And then it popped three more fat things popped up around it. And I was like, oh, my God, this could happen on my face. Right. And then um, I started bleeding rectally for two and a half years when I pooped. That's why my shirt, if you guys are listening, you can't see it, it says love when you poop, because when I used to poop for two and a half years, it was a on a one to ten on a pain scale it was a six or seven followed by blood. And then I just like hope that goes away and I go about my business. Went to doctors, did all these things. They want to put me on Prilosec, do all these things. And I just it didn't sound right. It sounded like an alien. So I, I was I, I guess on a deeper level, I was smart enough not to put those synthetics in my body, but I wasn't smart enough to change my diet or, or do anything. So um, when we went to Hippocrates, they were, you know, they're it's like the, the great great grandfather of the green juice. Right. And they make their green juice with 50 percent sunflower and pea sprouts and 50% cucumber celery. And you drink two of those a day, every day. So I came home, I got the juicer. And because they said at the take it home program, if you're not doing two green juices a day, you're not on the Hippocrates protocol, do not expect the same results. So my friend that I went with had chronic lymphocytic leukemia, it was a blood cancer. They had no cure for him. So he went there to Hippocrates, he asked me to go with him. And I said, let's do this. I'm going to do this with you. I, after a week there, I felt better than I felt in like my whole life. I felt like I was 15, 18 years old again. And I bought a $600 Kempo KP3 1-304 unit. And I started growing sprouts and juicing. And I never missed, dude. Five and a half years, I made, I grew and made a green juice every single day. And I completely transformed my health. So I was sold down the river, first person experience on green juices. Now, the problem was that sometimes when I was traveling, I couldn't get access to it. And I was pissed about it. And I knew fresh was best. So I was growing these living foods. So um, I ran into this guy, um, his wife was actually working at Hippocrates, he was a chef, and he had this buddy that was a, an old formulator, and he was kind of an eclectic dude, and he says he, he's packed, he's like 73 years old, he works 15 hours a day, he won't take on any more clients, but maybe he'll take you on, because on my recommendation, because we're best friends, and he did. And he started, we, he, we, he made this green powder for me. He said, this is as close as you're going to get to a fresh press juice. Highly concentrated. We don't sacrifice. There's no, let's cut cost. It was the most expensive ingredients we could find. And I started doing that. Well, I gave one day when we were delivering sprouts to, because we used to deliver sunflower, pea sprouts and wheatgrass to 40, 50 cancer patients a week out of my garage. I kind of got into doing that and teaching classes. This little old lady with kidney issues was juicing wheatgrass and she called me and she said, Hey, I went to Dr. Bailey's office was one of our pickup zones and my wheatgrass wasn't there. And I'm just thinking, Oh my God, it's going to be a two and a half hour drive in traffic to get this tour and back. And I'm just like, I don't have time. I was like, Hey, let me, I'm going to mail you this bag of green powder. I want you to try it. And she said, but you said fresh is best. I was like, I know, but I want you to try it. And I liked it. Um, a week later she called me and she says, Hey, I love this stuff. It gives me just as much energy as the wheatgrass and I don't have to clean that damn juicer. And I was like, oh, right. So for her, she didn't have a lot of strength in her shoulders and the, I get it. So I, I didn't think anything of it. Here I am trying to figure out how I'm going to get out of the financial services industry and help people with their health and actually make a living at it. And um, two weeks later, she calls me up. She goes, I need some more of this. And I'm like, well, he won't take on any more people. I called him up. Nope. I ain't taking nobody else on. He goes, I got to get rid of clients. And I was like, dang it. And I said, well, just send me a six pound bag of that stuff. And I'll, so I just started making packets for her. And then I thought, well, I'll send this out to six of my friends. So I wrote green stuff on it, <laughs> called six of my buddies. So I want you to try this stuff. In a week, four of them called me up before I even called them. They said, Hey, this stuff tastes terrible, but my God, do I feel good? Um, I need some more. And then I was like, Oh my God, this could be one way. I, Cause I was going to coach people, which I did. I was coaching, I was coaching people already for free. Um, and then I started charging for that. Um, and that's how the whole thing got started. So I was shipping it out, out of my garage, bagging it. And then we finally made a little label and dressed it up. And now, now we have uh, Dr. Scott Treadway, our formulator. He's one of the top formulators in the world. And he's super healthy. His skin looks like he's 35. The guys, you know, if you've met, I'll, I'm going to introduce you guys for sure. We talked about that. Yeah. Um, and we have 
um, a GMP certified, you know, lab and, and all that stuff. And, and um, I'm kind of piggybacking off his 40 years and his connections with farms and, and suppliers to get the best stuff. And, and we ship worldwide now and it's uh, kind of crazy, <laughs> but that's how you know, the whole thing started. The, the first time I had a, a green powder before uh, making our own brand, a uh, big scoop of it, I felt different with the mm -hmm. first serving, the very yeah. first serving. I felt so good that I kept my mouth closed about it. I didn't tell anybody because I thought, you know, there must be cocaine in this or something. <laughs> what is making me feel so good? And I wanted more. And I, after a few days, I had a couple of family members approach me and they were wondering if I was taking antidepressants. I had, to, I had to convince them, you know, I was never depressed. I was just, you know, I worked so long and I come home, I didn't have any energy left. I was wiped yeah. out uh, and, and now I'm charged up. What are, you, what are you doing? You know, I'm taking this green powder and of course, can I have some? And yep. they had similar experiences. It was, you know, it, I didn't have the nutrition in my body to fuel the amount of work I was doing. I was running out. I was nutrient depleted. People don't realize until they take the nutrient dense foods. And that's what this is. You know, we've, mm -hmm. the, the, the water's been removed. It's been condensed. A lot of the fiber has been removed. You're getting the nutrients from these fruits, vegetables, algaes, grasses, whatever happens to be in that formula. And they are powerful. So very similar um, experience. And yeah. I mean, and I would say this, this, when I got back from Hippocrates, I thought, because they were pushing sub supplementation in Hippocrates. The only thing I walked out of there with was digestive enzymes because I went to a class and it kind of made sense with me because all the stuff I'd been eating had done to my gut. I wanted to rehabilitate my digestive tract. So I knew that was part of the process, those digestive enzyme deals. But I'm like, no, I'm nature boy. I stayed away from Prilosec and all that stuff. I don't need this stuff. I'm going to heal naturally. Well, two years, it took me two years, dude. Two years into the process, I was reading educating myself. And I found out that 85% of the nutrients have been completely farmed out of the soil. So that's when it hit me kind of like a thunderbolt. I'm like, oh, it doesn't matter if I'm eating healthier organic foods. It's still 85% deficient. I am running around on 15% fuel. Imagine what we could feel like if we're at hundred percent. So I knew I was getting more, some of that from the, obviously the fresh sprouts and stuff like that was giving me a tremendous amount so that's when I decided to add in that, um, also add in that green powder and supplementation. And it took my health up another two levels. So um, I kind of had to eat a little crow on that, but I'm very glad I did. And I just keep learning, man. It's just like add in the supplementation, add in the water, the purifier. You know, I just keep grounding mats, you know, all these things. And you just keep stacking them in. You get a new lifestyle and, and your, your body responds quite well. Yeah, I love it. So the here, here it is. This is the uh, cliffhanger reveal um, where we had where I learned from you last time. Knowing the importance of fruits and vegetables and how much we should consume in a day, um, I was against capsules. I'm, you know, had to be in a scoop form because you can get much more. You can get, you know, in a single scoop, you can get thirty or forty capsules worth. Right. Uh, but some people are using uh, capsules for the reasons that they just won't use green powder if, it, if they have to taste it. They don't all taste great. <laughs> and I, I, you may have given some other reasons to say, no, you know, capsules work too. Anyone here, I would recommend if you haven't uh, tried a green formula, try mine, try Tim's. Um, if you don't like them, find one that you like. Um, yeah. Find one that you'll stick with. And if you're not going to use a scoop, Get the capsules. Yeah, we actually have people. I've got a couple dozen people that are making their own capsules. And we finally got to the size now where I'm going to do a real small run. And we're going to actually encapsulate some and offer that to people. But just, just to make it easier on them. Because some people, you know, that's what makes the world go around. Everybody's different, right? We're all unique individuals. And some people just don't like the taste. And a lot of times, especially in the beginning, people's taste buds are so jacked up because they're so polluted. That's one of the reasons. Um, and I tell people, if you don't like the taste, you really need it. And that's, that's actually honest truth. So capsules really help people. And I just tell them, drink them with a lot of water and the capsules will open up and the stomach will swish them around and you'll get the nutrients just because you're, you're still deficient like everybody else. So you got to get that stuff somewhere. And, you know, some people just, it's weird to me, but you know, I guess I was doing it too, but a lot, some people just don't like vegetables. They don't like greens, whatever. We have a lot of clients like that, but they'll 
take that green juice and just get it in because they know it's good for them and how it, it makes them feel amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And if, to drive the point home and how important this is, um, a lot of people don't realize, you know, the government agencies have really just identified a handful of vital or vitamins, vital nutrients. And they were the obvious ones. You know, if you don't get enough vitamin D, you get rickets and vitamin C, scurvy and all the things that, you know, show up more quickly when you don't have the right nutrition. And that number of, you know, uh, the, the recommended dietary intake, I think it used to be called recommended daily allowance when I was a kid. It's mm -hmm. changed over the years and the number of nutrients has grown. Every now and then they realize, oh, if we don't have this particular nutrient, eventually this develops. So the recommendations are continuously being adjusted and certain nutrients are, are being added. When it comes to plant foods, you know, it's interesting. There's like seven major classifications of these phytonutrients. And uh, if you took one of the classifications, for instance, the, the terpenes, well, there's four, you know, subclassifications of the terpenes and one of those being carotenoids. And, and there's something like, you know, 400 carotenoids that are important for us to be getting in our diet from plant foods. There's thousands estimated like some 25,000 important nutrients that we should be getting from phytonutrients, but I guarantee it's even bigger than that because there's too many for us to study. We're not going to ever realize how many there are and the important benefits of each one. What we do know is if we get so many fruits and vegetables, all the colors represented, hopefully a good organic source. So they're nutrient dense. There's more nutrients in the organic fruits and vegetables. We get that variety, all the colors from different sources, maybe on the fruit and vegetable side. Um, if you don't like fruits, okay, good. Emphasize the vegetables. So be it. Um, yeah. Let me shed some light on this because it's, I, I, it, <laughs> First off, when I, in 2011, when I did my first part of my transformation, we have one of the top phytochemical researching institutes. It's, it's at Oregon State University in my home state, right? And at that point in time, they had, they had, they were, they had counted, I think, 70, 70, 71,000 phytochemicals out of just wheatgrass. Phyto means plant chemical or plant nutrient, phytochemical, phytonutrient, same show, right? In 2012, a year later, they were up to 74,000 and still counting. We could have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of these phytochemicals, these plant nutrients that have the ability to prevent reverse disease. Point in case, in, what was it, 1991, somewhere in there, it, Johns Hopkins, um, uh, the, the cancer research division discovered the phytonutrient sulforaphane out of broccoli, right? I don't know if you remember that. I think George Bush Sr. was, in, was a president at the time. And this actually made national news. This 50 year phytochemical researcher in cancer said that the sulfur thing in broccoli, he said it was the biggest discovery ever in the history of cancer. He said, I look in a Petri dish, they got the sulfur thing in there, the cancer cells, it would just kill cancer cells, just kill it. And they named it phytochemo or plant chemo. Like, think about this, the top place, Johns Hopkins, the top researcher, he says this is the best thing he's ever seen in cancer in 50 years. That made national news. And from that little blip on the mainstream media, the price of broccoli seed doubled and broccoli has been doubled and stayed doubled ever since then more than alfalfa or red clover or radish. It's still, it's still more. So that just goes to show you the power of the media and people are not stupid. If we're given the correct information, people will act. And you see their, their dollars drove that industry. The more money, more people wanted broccoli, the seed went up because of supply and demand. This is again, how we change industry. Now, you don't have to be a, you can be an engineer, you can be a rocket scientist, you can be a phytochemical researcher, but if you just use common sense and understand that nature has been around for billions of years, kind of like Ann Wigmore, the gal that, you know, started the Hippocrates Health Institute, she healed herself of stage four colon cancer. Her grandmother was her surrogate grandma, was the village doctor back in Lithuania. Ann did a very, very uh, robust, uh, very um, test uh, on, on, on grass because she actually healed herself with um, lawn grass because all grasses are the same. They have chlorophyll in it and all these phytochemicals. She says, I wonder which one's best. So she took wheatgrass and ryegrass and barley grass and lawn grass. And she did a, a very rigorous experiment. She opened up the door and she let the dog in and the dog sniffed all the grasses and it went back and ate the wheatgrass. 
then they shooed the dog out of there. Then she opened up the door and she let the cat in. The cat sniffed all the grasses and ate the wheatgrass. So the first one was called a lab experiment, right? The dog. The second one, this is a joke. The second one was a cat scan, right? Very, very comprehensive things. And isn't it funny that now in 2011, I just told you that story that the top phytochemical researchers at the Oregon State University were studying wheatgrass. And Wigmore figured that out years ago with a dog and a cat. So <laughs> all we have to do is use our common sense and our instincts. We don't need to research this stuff. We just need to put it in our bodies. Yeah. Yeah. And get our own first person experience. That's what's going to tell you if it's working. Now, don't rely on me or Michael or anybody else. Try it out. See how it makes you feel. And then you'll know. Then you'll know. But we're still going to tell you. <laughs> tell you. you know, we're we're going to tell you. We're going to lead you so you can try it. Right. Yeah. But because the reality is they do so much more than we, we know. You know, um, you call them uh, phytochemicals, um, phytonutrition, phytonutrients. Um, they, you know, we were talking about getting chemicals out of our bodies. They are one of their functions are acting as natural detoxifiers. Mm -hmm. I don't know why we call them antioxidants. That's only one of the things they do. They act as antioxidants. They have the ability to absorb free radicals, which can prevent, you know, aging and damage and cancers and stuff like that. But why don't we call them detoxifiers? Detoxifiers. I'll tell you why. Because they do more than that. Mm -hmm. They help regulate hormones. Why not call them hormone regulators? You know, well, because they also <laughs> increase intercellular communication. Maybe we should call them neurotransmitters. They do so much for us and things that we're only beginning to realize. I want to encourage everyone listening. If you haven't tried a green product, get one. And if you don't like the taste of it, use it. And when it's done, find another one. That may be well, like another thing. If you don't like the taste of it, add lemon juice to it first or mm -hmm. lime juice or both. Or I actually had a guy that... Um, his son actually won the state championship in high school years back. And his son said, dad, he goes, I love how this stuff makes me feel. He goes, I am just practiced in the games. My energy in the fourth quarter is ridiculous because I hate the taste of this stuff. I hate it. So he actually came to his dad. He said, Hey, if you put this in unsweetened cranberry juice, he goes, it tastes like a smoothie. And that was what he figured out. Right. So the, or you could actually put it in some nut milk and we really like sprouted nut milks, but any nut milk will do just to try to get the different flavor. Try many different things. Try to figure it out. Capsules, whatever you got to do, get this stuff in you and just let it do its magic because it is, it is really all you're, and all you're really doing is you're just plugging yourself back into the home station, the home base where you're from. You're an expression of nature and you're just getting back to your roots, literally. Yeah. Good stuff. That's a good word. Well, you know, we can go on forever. Um, you are truly one of those people, unique individuals. You found out so much on your own, out of your own need. And I know there's people listening right now um, that want to know more about you, what they can do. Where can they go to find more of your story and, and learn from all of your mistakes? Yeah, and absolutely. Now well, the easiest place to just go to our website, just go to chemicalfreebody.com. Um, my pod, I have a podcast called the health hero show. If you want to get free information, it's on Spotify, iTunes, Google play, all those things. Um, and I also have a player, um, on the website that's free information. We have a group coaching community. Um, people can kick the tires on that, um, and, um, check it out. We, we go live every week once, uh, and I want to have you on too. I'd like to have you on my, maybe at the end of this month, January, you could come on and talk to my group. That would Sounds be really good. cool. I'd love to. Um, once a month, I have Dr. Scott Treadway, our formulator, come on. It's the second Tuesday of the month. And then other two times, I come on there with the topic. Um, tomorrow, we're going to be doing um, uh, vision boards for the beginning of the year, which will be cool. And getting people, I mean, I do all kinds of stuff. I, we do meditations. We talk about gut health. I bring people on. We talk about clonics. I mean, we talk about everything. And we have a great community. And then we have our products, of course. And if people are interested in those, I just tell them, just go to the products tab because we have a lot of them and just like pick a savings. There's a thing called savings bundles. You can get a discount and then, um, uh, you know, a jumpstart bundle, or I do what's called the total energy and detox bundle, um, or pick anything that fits your budget or whatever gravi you gravitate to. And then at checkout, you know, what I should do, Michael, is we can create, um, a 5% discount code. What do you want it to be? You want it to be Dr. Haley? Dr. Haley would be wonderful. D R H A L E Y. 
Okay, just put in Dr. Haley at checkout and you get a double discount. So, and then we have a double your money back guarantee on all of our products. And, and like Michael said, it, it doesn't, on the green product, it doesn't really matter. Mix and match, whatever. I, I, I've already had you on my show. There is so much need out there and people need so much help um, that I, you and I could work 24 seven. I don't think we can make a dent, but I, I think we are making a dent actually. I have to change my perspective on that because um, that's why we're waking up every day and doing what we do. Cause I could just sit back and be healthy by myself. I don't need to, <laughs> you know, to do anything else, but I, I get excited. Like I actually called a guy yesterday just random. I call clients every once in a while. And he said he was him and his wife met in the military. And right afterwards, he got in a car accident and was pronounced dead at the scene. And he fractured his spine and just blew himself up. I mean, everything was torn apart. And he said that um, um, our green product actually helped him to get his bowel movements going again, which is very big. I think a T9 fracture. It was really, really bad, severed or something like that. Um, I had another gal that said she was packing she's a lineman for, um, for the uh, electrical companies and she'd actually crushed her spine and she was in pain and stuff. And then she'd gotten on the products and followed a bunch of advice and stuff, the stuff that you teach as well. And, and, um, her spine was regenerating and, um, and her hair and nails is growing back and she had her energy back, you know, it's stories like that where, or it just could be somebody going to work, right? This one dude called me and he's like, dude, he's like, I got to thank you so much because I would come home and my little boy wanted to play catch and I literally had no energy. I, I was done. And he goes, now I can play catch with my son. And I just envisioned this guy playing catch with his son. It's like, that's why we do what we do. These, these are working class people like you and me. They just don't have the right information because society's not teaching this stuff. And mom and dad didn't know it. It's not their fault, but that's, it's, it's just out there, man. It's nature. We, that's the message, man. It's just get back to nature and everything will start turning around for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're you're not just teaching it; you're also doing it. In fact, we talked um, a little bit earlier today, and you told me about how your day started, which was a lot like how mine starts. Um, but would you share that with my audience and uh, how your day, the things that you do in it, what your typical day looks like, and how it ties in with the core four? Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing that we teach over here, and, and that I practice as well, is that your your day starts with your bedtime routine. It's the night before. So an hour before you go to bed, you got to start preparing for bed. Cause if you're on your cell phone, laptop, and you're working, you got those blue lights going, you are not going to be producing melatonin because your body still thinks it's daylight. We tell people get away from the electronics. We actually go into depth on this stuff. We show, we actually have people come in, engineers or, or electricians will put a switch at least on the bedroom. So people can like turn all the electricity out of the room completely at night we want the room to be completely dark, fresh air, crack your windows if you don't have a purifier yet. And even if you do have a purifier, crack your freaking window, um, get a good quality bed. I mean, we go through all these things, you know, and, and, then, and, and, then, and then go to sleep, right? And there, there's other things. Take a sauna before you go to bed. If you don't have a sauna, rinse off with water. We, we really focus on sleep. That's very important. And then you have consistency. You go to bed at the same time. You wake up at the same time. And I woke up this morning around 4.30. Uh, I was doing some stuff. Um, I read a book for probably half an hour. Um, I played guitar for an hour, maybe a little bit longer because I'm working on a song right now. Um, I did yoga with a meditation practice that I do. And um, I drank some water with lemon in it. And then I had a green juice. Um, I actually made a matcha tea and I drank a little bit of coconut water. And that's, that's all I've had today. I mean, what people don't understand is like, when you eat food, when you, you it, it's a tremendous amount of energy to, to, to process that stuff. 60 to 80% of our energy is used to process food. So yeah, that's the first thing we, you want to get people doing something. The first thing we do is we get them to, to break, you know, breakfast is breaking the fast is change the heavy meal for breakfast for liquid nourishment. That's the first thing, unless you're bulimic or anorexic, we're not trying to give those people permission. And if you're type two diabetic, then you would eat monolithically like a lean green leafy salad or quinoa or teff or something like that. And then after you get well, you can go back to the liquid nourishment thing, but everybody else, that's the first step. Just try to get off of that um, heavy breakfast. And I know it's good pancakes, French toast, bacon, eggs. I mean, I grew up with it. The smell still gets me, but if I could remember what my friend said, he said uh, something about like feeling good, 
uh, is better than anything taste or something like that. That's my buddy who healed himself of cancer. He's oh, nothing tastes as good as healthy feels. That's what he said. Nothing tastes as good as healthy feels. He was in the, he was, he was looked like he was going to die and he saved his own butt. He took his own power back and cleaned up his lifestyle. And I did it right there beside him. And, and I just never looked back, man. And I just want people to be inspired to do the same thing and realize that your body's not much different than mine and Michael's. You got arms and feet and red blood cells and the lymphatic system. And, you know, you're going to drink some water. So if you're going to drink water tomorrow, next week, next month, let's get your water right. If you're going to breathe some air today, tomorrow, next week, next month, let's get your air right. Let's just get these basic inputs. Let's be an intelligent system. Let's not be an open or dumb system and just keep going with the flow with what everybody else is doing. Because look around, it is not working. We have a broken system in our health. We have a, we have a massive health crisis before this whole COVID deal even showed up. And, you know, we could get into that, but I don't know. Don't want to get too political on that stuff, but <laughs> I will if you want me to. <laughs> Well, you know, I have already uh, gotten rid of uh, half our audience, I think, on that by, by going into that topic already. So th those that are still here are probably in agreement with us. So no need to. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Rely on yourself a little bit your because, you know, there's a there's a big division. And yeah, we can get into it, but no point in it. Well, I, I would say this, that that division is created intentionally. And that's what we have to do now. The old redneck, Tim, because I literally have to end with this. I was coming back from Eastern Oregon. And this guy is like literally out in the middle of the woods, walking his dog with a mask, with a mask on. And, you know, we have research. We showed even before COVID that masks like increase your uh, respiratory infections by 13 times. So if you want to get COVID, wear a mask, right? There's just, we don't need to get into all that. But the old Tim would have been like, look at that stupid SOB, blah, 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 blah. But the new Tim that has learned how to articulate this and learned that that, that, that dialectic has been created on purpose to take us and divide us because it's easier to conquer people when they're divided and we're fighting in fighting against each other. Now, when I see somebody wearing a mask like that, I say, that guy cares about his health. He cares about his health. That's why he's wearing the mask. That's why they got the vaccine. They actually care about their health. They just have a different belief system because they have different information because they've been, that's been put into, it's been put into them. Right. Yeah. Wow. So that's a good way to look at to it. Him, and meet him in the middle and say, hey, you wear a mask because you care about your health, don't you? He's like, yeah. And you know what I found out? A lot of people are not doing it to protect themselves. They're decent people, Michael, and they don't want to hurt other people. That's why they're doing it, right? Or they get the vaccine because they, they, they and then they're interested. They, I said, are you interested in public health for, for kids? And they're like, oh, yeah. I said, me too. I, I don't wear a mask because I'm interested in public health. And you do wear a mask because you're interested in public health. So let's both agree on public health. Yeah. And then if we look at public health, what's the number one denominating factor to, that, that says what public health is? It's infrastructure. I went right back to that women's labor movement. They cleaned up the urine and the feces and the dead horses and the cows out of the water supply. They got the, the sanitation worker and the plumber have done more for this country's health than the pharmacist and the doctor ever will. Measles is an example. 14 out of 100,000 people was dying of measles and infectious disease in the year 1900. By the year 1945, 98% eradicated. The measles vaccine hit the scene in 1963. So was it the doctor and the pharmacist? No, it was the, it was the infrastructure, the clean water and cleaning up the streets that was built on the backs of a working class movement that cleaned it up. So that's what we got to do. We have to stop being lazy and we have to come together and stop fighting, drop our egos and start loving each other and, and find that common ground. That's the only way we're going to heal this world. Yeah. And that's exactly what you did in that, in that perspective of, oh, you're wearing a mask. Uh, you must care about your health and dropping the ego, looking at it from that perspective. And I, I love it. That's a, that's a great way to look at things. So it's the only way that we're going to come back together. Oh man. Hey, Tim, thank you so much for doing what you do and being on the show. Um, my listeners go check him out, subscribe to his content, try his products and continue to grow in the knowledge and uh, in your health. Well, Dr. Haley, I got to say something about you, man. I, I, I do probably five podcasts a week and um, I've met a lot of people and I am very in tuned to people's vibrational frequency. I mean, you know, the listeners probably already know this, but I can tell down to my bones that you actually care about people and then you, you have people's best interests at heart. So your listeners are very fortunate to have you. Um, your wife is very fortunate to have you. Mm. We haven't talked. I don't have. You have any kids? I have four kids. 
and they're very yeah. they have a very fortunate life to have you in their life man we're, we're yeah, this thank you this planet is very fortunate to have you. Um, so I'm just um, honored that you had me on your show. And if there's anything I can do to help you um, help other people, I'm down. You just give me a call. Absolutely. Thank you. And maybe the listeners will ask some questions and, and set up the next meeting between us two. How's that sound? That's great, brother. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Thank you.